Mary comes in, Jesus is sitting at the table. She's, he's sitting at the table. He's eating with a man called Simon. Simon is a Pharisee. He's of the religious sect. And this lady comes in. And we know that this lady is a, is a sinner. She, we know that she's a prostitute. But she comes in and she comes and she breaks her alabaster jar upon Jesus. In other words, she, she has made up her mind that she wants the Lord. She's made up a mind that she's after Jesus and Jesus only. And she's made up a mind that it's not what Jesus can do just for her. She has come for the Lord. Can I say that again? She has come for the Lord. Because she understands when she receives Jesus or when she comes to Jesus, Jesus can change everything that is in her. In other words, this lady for a long period of time was applying an oil on the outside, but it couldn't fix that what was in the inside. May I say it again? She was applying an oil on the outside, but it was not an oil that can change who she was on the inside. And so Jesus carried an oil that could change her from the inside. May I be as bold to say to you this morning, there are too many Christians that are trying to apply the things on the outside, trying to fix the things on the outside. It's not going to work. The only transformation agent that there is, is Jesus Christ. And Jesus changes us from the inside out. It's not from the outside in. It's an inner transformation that leads to an outer reformation. You must say it again. It's an inner transformation. Jesus wants the heart. And He doesn't want some of your heart. He wants all of your heart. But here's the focus. Are you guys there? It must be about the Lord. It must not be what the Lord even can do for us. It must be about King Jesus. I want you to note this morning, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're truly going to be a Christian, then, then we have to stop with messages of the seven steps to this and the seven steps to that or the seven simple steps to get to a blessing. No, we have to return to the gospel message where it says, take up your cross, die to self and come after me. The Bible that you and I have to preach, come on, let's give Jesus some praise. The Bible that you and I preach has to understand, or we have to understand, the gospel is a bloody thing. Can I say that again? The gospel is a bloody thing because it will cost you your life. The gospel that Jesus came to preach was a gospel where you have to take up your cross. You have to deny yourself. You have to die to yourself. So that Christ can live in you and through you. I want you to understand that it's not hard for the, for the Holy Spirit to cast out the devil. That's the minor problem for him. Are you there? It's minor. I say it again. For a stronger kingdom to cast out a weaker kingdom is a minor thing. Because greater is he that's within me than he that's within this world. So to cast out demons is the easier task because we belong to the stronger kingdom. But the hardest task of the Holy Spirit is to get you dead and to get your flesh out of the way. I'll say it again. The demonic, the, the demons are not the biggest problem. The problem is your flesh. The problem is this peace that we are living in because people by nature don't like dying to themselves. We are alive to ourselves. But the Bible says, crucify the flesh, crucify the lust of the flesh, crucify the pride of life, crucify it, get it out of the way. Why? Because there's a power that wants to live in you and His name is the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit wants to come and dwell upon you, in you, and He wants to work through you. The Bible says in, in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter number 6, verse number 9, it says the following. It says, Our Father in heaven. Please note that. Our Father. I will always want to say it like this. Please note the first word, our. It introduces us immediately to a family. May I say that again? Our Father introduces us immediately to family. I couldn't care how strong you are. You are not stronger than the power of the body of Christ united together. The body of Christ is the most powerful agent upon the earth because we have a spirit that lives inside of us. His name is the Holy Spirit. And we have a head that is on top of this body. 
may I just say, in this body, if this physical body, the elbow does not give instruction to the eye. The eye does not give instruction to the toe. It is the head that gives the instructions. If I cut off this head, the body will not have any direction. Come on guys, are you with me? Therefore, as Christians, we have to understand, we have to be connected to a body so that we can be connected to the head. Okay? In the last days, Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 25, people will forsake the assembly of believers, believing that they are the church. It is error. You need the body of Christ because each part of the body of Christ supplies to the, to the other part of the body. In other words, the elbow supplies to the hand. The hand supplies to the shoulder. We need this whole body to function. Come on, guys. If one part of the body hurts, all of the body hurts. If your, if your toe hurts, your body's going to hurt. Come on, are you okay? But we have to understand how dependent we are upon the head. We are deeply dependent upon Jesus. Without Jesus, this body is not going to function. He is the head of the church. He is the head of the universe. He is fully in charge. Come on guys, are you, are you well? And so what I'm trying to get across to you this morning, we, God's people, need to return to Him. We need to return to the simplicity of Jesus. What is the simplicity of Jesus? It is this, deny the flesh, take up your cross, die to yourself, come and follow me. That's the Scriptures. The Scriptures does not say, do these five things and you will live the blessed life. No, if you read your Bible, it's full of death. It's full of persecution. It's full of trials. It's full of suffering. Come on, are you there? However, in all of the above, He says, I've made you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. In all of these things, I make you more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. In all of these things, I've made you co heirs with Christ in heavenly places. In all of these things, I've positioned you in Christ. So our victory in this life is in Christ. It's about the Lord, it is unto the Lord, and it's for the Lord. There is no other way. Man cannot help you, but Jesus can transform you. Jesus can save you. Jesus can heal you. Jesus can deliver you. Jesus can do something with us. Come on, are you there? I say this all the time, and I'll say this again. I can't do something for you. It has to be the Lord. 